Hello and a very warm welcome to this masterclass on virtual EMC design with CST Suite brought to you by AutoCAD Professional in association with Dassault Systems. EMC or electromagnetic compatibility compliance is an important aspect for today's automobiles from a road safety perspective as the electronics content in vehicles is, is rapidly increasing in areas such as powertrain, infotainment, chassis systems, as well as numerous safety related functions. Therefore, performing virtual pre-compliance EMC tests during the design phase can be crucial to ensure that emission and susceptibility limits are met early in the product development process, thereby saving time and money. Dassault Systems, which is a leader in product design and simulation software solutions, offers a high-performance 3D EM analysis tool for designing, analyzing, and optimizing electromagnetic components and systems with its Simulia CST Studio Suite. Over the course of the next one hour, this webinar will give you insights on identification of potential compliance issues before prototyping, shortening the design development cycle with respect to EMI and EMC issues, understanding EMC exposure at component and vehicle levels, and reducing costly on-road measurements by adopting virtual testing. To take us through this masterclass, I would like to invite Dr. Siva Sai Krishna Puranam, the industry process consultant at Dassault Systems, Dr. Siva holds a PhD in Electrical Engineering from the University of Minnesota, USA, with a focus on antenna design. He has worked as an electrical engineer with Seagate in the areas of analysis and validation of electronic circuits used in hard disk drives. Dr. Siva's expertise lies in the domains of simulation and fabrication of antenna array design, as well as electromagnetics. Before I hand it over to Dr. Siva, I would like to mention to the audience that this will be an interactive session with polls that you can respond to, as well as you can ask your questions by sending them in the Q&A box, and we will take them up with Dr. Siva at the end of his presentation. Over to you, Dr. Siva. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. <laughs> so I thank each and every one of you who has basically joined this presentation. So I'll just share my screen and then we will basically get uh, started. Okay, welcome, a hearty welcome to all of you who have basically joined this presentation. As uh, Mr. Mayank so kindly introduced me, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sai Krishna and I work as an IPC or an industry process consultant with uh, the source systems, especially for, the, for our flagship electromagnetic simulation software called CST Studio Suite. In case if any one of you are wondering as to what CST stands for, it stands for Computer Simulation Technology. So in general, if at all, if you look at this is uh, this is what we call the pie chart of CST Studio Suite, where you have uh, five different main areas in which we perform electromagnetic analysis. The first one is, of course, the microwave and the RF slash optical domain, which deals with the design of antennas, micro and all things related to higher frequency circuits. The next one deals with the uh, EDA, uh, which deals with electro uh, EDA and also with uh, electronics, which deals, this is where you have everything that deals with signal integrity and power integrity. Today's topic will actually be on the design of, uh, will be a discussion on EMI, EMC. So we do have a specific set of uh, simulation templates so which will help you in setting up your simulation faster so that you can identify where a potential issue is and whether your circuits that you have designed for your different different domains will be compatible the fourth one of course deals with the particle dynamics part where you deal with the high power microwave uh, devices like traveling wave tubes magnetrons klystrons and high power oscillators and finally, we have the statics or the low frequency one, which deals with the low frequency circuits. Okay, so now with that uh, being said, let us just uh, get into the main topic. So here is uh, an overview of what we will be going through. Initially, we'll be dealing with uh, an introduction to EMI, EMC, and uh, then we'll look at cable harness. And in that, I'll give you a little introduction to Cable Studio and features. Uh, many of the customers that we know uh, are not uh, aware that CST is like a hidden treasure with many gems that are hidden below the surface. So we have a dedicated Cable Studio suite as well that will help you in designing 
cables that can be used or else you can also import dot uh, xml files that create cables so I'll, I'll go through all of these in detail and the third part uh, is something that i'll deal with which will deal with safe safety regulations let us say that uh, since this topic is mostly geared towards uh, uh, the automotive industry let us say that if you're creating uh, if you're designing cars or two wheelers or four wheelers you need to ensure because it's it is a device that is going to have human interaction then you would need to ensure that the, your device in addition to passing the emi and emc tests you'll also have to ensure that the amount of uh, that it is safe from an from an emac perspective for somebody to use it for a repeated uh, longer durations so i'll discuss a little bit on that as well so firstly uh, uh, let's get into the first part of the talk which deals with uh, the emi emc part so the scope of emi emc if at all if you are going to be looking into it uh, the ability of an electrical system to work in its electromagnetic environment is mostly divided into two uh, is bifurcated into two divisions the first one is, is the emissions part and the second one is of course the immunity slash susceptibility part what do i mean by emissions if at all if i have an electromagnetic if i have a device that is basically taking care of signals that are going from one end of the signal from one end to the other end then you would need then you, the system needs to be designed in such a way that it would work without influencing the surrounding devices this is what we call under emissions the second one is the system that you have designed should not be influenced by the surrounding equipment i mean even if the surrounding equipment basically radiate out or have some kind of an external noise that is impinging on your system your system should be able to work on its own without uh, basically losing the uh, uh, standards for which it has been designed electronic products need to be compliant with regulations and of course with standards and especially if you're looking at emissions we mostly have conducted emission and radiated emission and then we'll go through all of these in a little while and then you have uh, uh, electromagnetic immunity which is where let us say this is where all your shielding enclosures and your cabling and all of them come into picture so in a nutshell if i have to define what is electromagnetic compatibility or emc it is to make an emc in general it means that you have designed an electrical system which will work in its environment without influencing other devices or without being influenced by the surrounding devices now this emi this emc part of it it would it spans across the entire length uh, entire frequency gamut that you basically have for em waves in it spans all the way from Uh, low frequency kilohertz to megahertz and to gigahertz and in kilohertz you basically would have lightning strikes and then your switched pars uh, switch uh, smps signals and in megahertz you basically would have your electromagnetic pulse and hrf and other things and in gigahertz let us say you if you are looking at high frequency fet switching that is in digital electronics this is what it would come under so firstly before i even get started on our talk em we know that emc compliance is crucial for releasing products into the market without compliance to the emc standards that are defined by legal bodies for example like the fcc or the european commission a product cannot be sold in a given country furthermore oems uh, like most of you who have joined might have their own or even more stricter standards that have been imposed on their suppliers emc uh, in the past was typically associated with measurements only it was applied late in the design stage as it required a working prototype so when problems appeared in the tests a lot of effort was spent on troubleshooting the problem by applying the countermeasures in order to pass the test often the source of the problem was undetected and only the main symptoms were mitigated now this approach can be a very cost intensive one because you are trying to ensure that you are solving the problem right at this stage and not at the requirements and in the concept in the development stage you are basically solving it you're trying to ensure that your product gets solved in between the life cycle from uh, product development to manif- before you go into mass manufacturing this approach can be very cost intensive as changes to the design at a later stage of the design process require a very high effort in the worst case the time to the market can be delayed not only by uh, can de- can be delayed not only increasing your cost 
but also you know it might affect your problem uh, relations with your customer as well so emc if you basically take it as a part of the design process it will help you to avoid multiple troubleshooting iterations and it will uh, ensure that your product is not delayed uh, in its deployment to the market and uh, it helps you to avoid high effort and costs to correct. So let me give one very specific example uh, before we go into a lot more detail. So this is a specific example of a CAN bus. Uh, how and so we are just giving an example. Uh, we'll go into a lot more detail on one of. We'll take one couple of very specific cases and we'll deal with it in a lot more detail. But I just want you to give an overview as to why you would want to use simulation and what simulation can bring to the table. It's common for modern power electronic boards to contain communication signals. Consider the consider the PCB that is basically shown here. This is a much more complicated PCB here. Uh, so basically, you are looking at a CAN bus. And on the into this CAN bus uh, PCB, what we are basically doing is we are doing a BCI, a bulk current injection simulation, in which you inject RF currents into the power lines to basically see if at all, if any external uh, disturbance is coupled onto the cable lines, will your product still work? The plot on the top right shows that the noise currents that are in the case uh, when the PC, uh, when the filtering on the PCB is turned off. Now this is a lot more detailed workflow. I'm not going to get into a lot more detail here on this because this itself has to how to set up a problem like this. Uh, you know, the workflow itself will take about an hour or an hour and a half to explain. But what I just want you to understand is if at all, if you have designed a board and if you want to see whether your board will meet the requirements, all you would need from the simulation perspective is you need not even have a working prototype. All you would need is a PCB board that has been properly designed and you import it into CST Studio Suite. And then you ensure that your filtering is off. Uh, and then you see if you perform a BCI test, you would try to see as to what kind of a noise currents one would get. And then if you turn the filtering on, you can basically see whether your filter that you have designed is properly meeting your requirements. And in addition as well, uh, uh, simulation will actually give you a lot more information as to what is, uh, you can set up the monitors in such a way so that you can basically see as to what is the current that is flowing through your entire circuit. Now, this level of field inside, field currents that you basically see is something that in an actual test would not be able to give. So in an actual measurement test, you can basically see whether your circuit has failed or whether it has passed. But then if at all, if you're going into a lot more details, this is something that simulation can help you achieve. And this is, a, uh, in addition, uh, the simulation software, especially CSC Studio Suite, has come up to such a mature level that you can perhaps even set up a 3D model that mimics a specific test setup. For example, if you see here, this is a typical setup for your uh, RE, for you, according to this for 25 RE setup. So you basically have a monopole antenna that is basically placed about one meter away. Uh, and then you have specific lengths of wires that are basically connected to your structures. And then you can see whether this antenna is basically picking up any any signals when the PCB is basically working on. Now, this entire setup that we that you basically have uh, in, the, in the chamber itself, you can basically create something like this in CS3 itself. So as you can see, the full uh, uh, antenna model can actually be poor, can actually be created in a few clicks. And then we also do have test benches in our component library in CST as well, so that you as an EMC engineer can be up and running very, very fast with your simulations and in your design. So this helps you in uh, this helps you in, in a way that even before you go into the test chamber, you can construct a model very easily and get an idea of how this device will radiate and then experiment it with ways to ensure that this radiation is basically reduced. Now the full 3D PCB model along with that circuit elements can be included in the simulation and thus this model can provide us with very meaningful results before you actually build the model and then take it for testing into an actual anechoic chamber. So this is where simulation can actually aid the EMI EMC engineer in ensuring that he can have a working prototype that is basically ready, uh, which is meeting uh, basically the standards that are met before he actually goes and fabricates it for testing. Okay, now with that uh, motivation, I will go into the next part of the talk. But before we go in, uh, I would request the audience uh, to basically uh, have the first poll query. Uh, so uh, we wanted to make this much more interactive. So we wanted to see as to uh, 
we have a couple of polls so that we engage you so that we can tailor our presentations better thank you so uh, you'll be seeing the poll uh, the first poll question on your screen so once you basically answer it uh, please uh, uh, just wait for a couple of uh, seconds and then we should be able to see the result on the screen so we'll give it about another five more seconds so that uh, there will be people will actually answer them and uh, if i could request the uh, if i could request the professionals from autocar to have the results on screen please wonderful so what are the areas uh, and i hope you are able to see what are the areas you basically use your simulation antenna design and placement studio uh, emimc that's good 61% PCB simulations for signal and power integrity, I think, and other areas that are not mentioned above. Wonderful. That's uh, that's very great to see that we actually have an audience uh, for which uh, this uh, this session is specifically targeted for. But as you know, CS3 Studio Suite uh, is is the world's uh, is one, is the world's leading uh, simulation software for antenna design as well. So we'll see if at all at a later point of time we can have sessions on the other ones as well. Anyway, now continuing, uh, uh, thank you for the poll answers and thank you for the management for making this happen. Okay, the next, uh, so the next stage. So let's go into the actual design process. So why do I need, uh, now that we've looked at the motivation, if at all, if I'm, and we've we checked that it is easier, if at all, if you can do your EMI, EMC testing when you're in the design phase as well, rather than, uh, at the at a later stage when you basically have your uh, uh, component already already to be mass manufactured so let's see how we have the how the simulation can help you mitigate so why do i need the uh, emc simulation in the design stages as well so see, simulation of emc can actually be used in either in the design stages or of course in the uh, if at all if you basically want to troubleshoot it as well However, I would recommend to use it as early as possible during the design process in order to minimize the need for troubleshooting work. A very important part of the simulation compared to measurements is that it can be performed without the need for an actual prototype as we, as we saw in the canvas example. It can deliver answers to your fundamental what if questions. CST can help you in model, in designing uh, components and other uh, models in such a way so that everything can be parameterized. So let us say at the back of your mind, if you, if you have a question saying, what would happen if I change this parameter or that parameter? So instead of you basically building up prototypes and then changing capacitors or inductors, you can basically run multiple simulations in, uh, in the simulation process itself and understand as to how that is going to impact your final result. For example, uh, if at all, if you think, uh, do I need a shielded cable? How would it, uh, the final result look if I basically use an, uh, a shielded versus an unshielded one? Once these type of decisions are made, uh, you know, they cannot easily be changed at a later stage, right? So in the design process itself, uh, you can have answers to your fundamental what if questions. Even when strong care is taken during the design process, sometimes it, it will still be necessary to apply some troubleshooting. For example, uh, because the modern electronic systems exhibit a very high level of complexity. Also for troubleshooting as well, simulations can be helpful. The reason is a simulation can help you to understand the behavior of the device and it can help you in visualizing the fields or the current distributions inside a device which are not easily accessible by, by measurements. This will help the engineer to understand the root cause of the problem. But I just want to emphasize one thing with all the professionals who are who basically attended this, attending this. Just want to emphasize this line: simulation is not a competitor to measurements. Both of them should be used in a complementary fashion. Both tools, both are tools that can be efficiently used in a complementary fashion, and this will help the engineer to get a broader understanding of the electromagnetic behavior of a device as well, and also find and also ensure that the final goal of basically passing your uh, uh, standard tests are basically met. So in EMC, uh, we do have, we have typically a set of measurement standards that deal with different emission and susceptibility applications. As far as emissions are concerned, we basically uh, divide them into four main categories. 
you have ce or conducted emissions and then you basically have re or the radiated emissions and then we look at shielding effectiveness shielding effectiveness deals with how good your enclosure is whether there is anything that is basically leaking from uh, the inside to the outside and in the shielding effectiveness uh, studies itself you basically can look at different kinds of structures like vents or seams to understand as to how if at all if any signals leaking how would you basically try to ensure that something of that sort can be simulated and characterized and then you can basically look at uh, your emission from cables you just want to see whether any cable that you might have designed whether it is leaking anything by placing probes at different locations to see which are basically acting as antennas to try to see if at all if they can pick up any signal the next part of the emi emc part uh, of cst deals with the susceptibility part where you would be looking at uh, electrostatic discharges and you'll be looking at radiated immunity in order to ensure that uh, your cabling and everything is good and then you'll be looking at surge or electric fast transients these can be set up as double exponential signals in cst and what they can run over an extended period of time to basically see as to how susceptible your device is and finally of course the bci or the bulk current injection where you basically induce uh, uh, noise signals or unwanted signals with the help of a current clamp uh, into the cables that are going into your pcb line okay all of these can be dealt with in cst and uh, one of the main reasons uh, that uh, CST is a leader uh, in terms of uh, performing AMIMC is we have a very mature solver that will help you in ensuring that you perform uh, coupled simulations. Now, before I go into uh, what exactly is this, I'll just give you one example. So in a first step, uh, let us say that you have created a PCB model. You would ha you have an ODB++ file or you basically have any PCB vendor file. So you can basically read that file into CST. In the first step, the model geometry is read in, and then you perform a 3D analysis, 3D electromagnetic simulation. So when I want you to keep in mind that when you're performing 3D electromagnetic simulation, you're completely solving the entire Maxwell's equations. So, then, so the effect of the parasitic layout of the board, all of these is taken into account. Now the next step would be to basically run a circuit simulation part. Now you might ask as to why why uh, why am I running a circuit simulator as well if at all if I'm basically if I've already run a 3D EM simulation, the reason is if at all uh, we come back to the what if scenario, let us say that uh, you want to change one capacitor value and then see the entire effect of it. What in a traditional sense what you would do is you would have to run a complete 3D simulation again. So we have come up with this uh, thing called the co-simulation part where you perform a 3D electromagnetic simulation uh, with the components that you think that will be changed repeatedly by, by declaring them as ports. And then you would come back into the interlinked uh, circuit simulation part called the schematic. And then you would connect these in the ports and then you would run a complete, run a complete circuit simulation. The advantage of following this approach is once you have a 3D model that is already fixed and you have the entire S parameter values that have been obtained, you need not solve the complete uh, 3D model again. All you would need to do is to just perform a simple circuit simulation. So this as a circuit simulation is typically faster than the full 3D, we can run certain analysis faster on the schematic. And I just want to emphasize that the coupling between the two is not only one way, but there is a very tight integration within CST Studio Suite. Uh, every 3D model has the potential to include a coupled circuit model along with it. In the 3D model, as I've declared, as I've decided, as I've uh, 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 spoken before, any port that has been created uh, would be, uh, is defined to excite a particular signal. It will serve as a link between the 3D and the circuit schematic. I'll just show it to you in the couple of slides as to what I mean by this. In this way, the circuit simulator, uh, when it has properly been set up, it can basically access the field results from 3D simulation and it also one allows one to take the entire behavior of it, of the circuit in a nutshell. Provided the geometry of the device does not change, you can recalculate field distributions considering different circuit elements at the speed of a simple circuit simulator rather than performing a complete 3D simulation. So this obviously differs from a pure circuit simulation like a spy simulation, like which I think most of you are used to. Uh, imagine that the data schematic on the 
uh, in general if at all if you're running a, uh, if you imagine a spy simulation you are not taking the physical geometry of the pcb into account and all of them are uh, something that you would actually have to assume and basically run your simulation so at the end of the day you might be running your circuit simulation and then you might think that okay my final output which are the currents and voltages that i want are coming in but then because of the way the entire pcb has been set up you might actually be running into the ce conductor emission issues so if at all if you want to overcome uh, think uh, you know situations like that it's easier to run a complete uh, co simulation here the 3d simulation model that you basically have will take into account the physical geometry because and it carries out a full wave analysis solving all maxwell's equations calculating all of conducted and radiated coupling thus the combined effect of the 3d and the circuit model will give you an accurate representation of the physical device so let us take one very uh, uh, solid example here so here is uh, one uh, effect of here is one pcb that is basically showing you the design of a step down buck converter that has been uh, created in cst as you can see this is the uh, 3d model so what this model is basically indicating is you have an input voltage of 12 volts and at the output you basically want to have 5 volts and for those of you who basically are uh, used to performing emi emc simulations you that's your listen network net, listen network that is basically there and then you have your uh, switching circuit right here so this is a switching loop so the signal that is basically coming in will be switched from 12 to 5 volts rapidly so uh, we can provide uh, uh, once you have a model like this so this is also a model that has been built specifically for uh, comparison between as to what the simulator and what the measured results are basically going to be so in our case what we do is we take the model geometry and as you can see here there are different different red arrows right here so every time you see a red arrow in the 3d simulation part uh, in the 3d model that basically is a port and as you can see each port that has been created will be linked to different components as you can see in the schematic window so you run your 3d em simulation and then you obtain the entire s parameter matrix here and on top of the s parameter matrices that you have basically obtained you add your different components and then you do run a complete you create a complete uh, circuit setup and then you basically simulate this circuit please do keep in mind that all values that you basically give here can be declared as parameters and then you can run a complete parametric sweep or an optimization sweep as well uh, in order to ensure that uh, Uh, you basically look at that what if scenarios that we were basically discussing so here is one very simple uh, uh, illustration of the simulated results that are that have been obtained on the right hand side and the measured results that one has obtained on the left hand side so if at all if i am looking at uh, my different uh, signal levels as you can see uh, this is uh, the ce result this is what you would basically get from the if i go back this is what i basically get from the probe here that is basically your listen that is looking for your noise that is basically coming in to the power supply lines you would basically see that these are the results that one would have from the simulation perspective and on the left hand side you would basically be looking at the results that one would actually get from the measured results from the board that we basically looked at so if you if you look at uh, uh the results that you basically have here which are the average results here you would be seeing that the amount of uh, simulations uh the results that you basically get from simulation are very close to the to the actual results that you are basically getting from the final prototype that has been manufactured and tested so as you can see simulation can help you in uh, achieving very good uh, results uh before you actually have in your hand a fully fabricated model so this would help the designer in understanding saying okay this is what i uh, this is these are the issues that i am basically facing and then this is what i would actually want to ensure that uh, i would need to decrease at some point of time so as i said simulation can get, go one level further you can also see that uh, if at all if i'm looking at the current at 57 megahertz you basically see that Uh, without the without any emi filter that has been created here you see that 
these are your power lines and then you see that the amount of signal that is basically coming in is pretty high so even before you have an actual built up of a signal or of a working model what you can do is you can create a uh, emimc filter where you can change the current paths and then you can basically get a model like this you can basically get a model like this so that you can see as to the amount of even because of the switching the amount of the ce that is basically going back into your uh, power lines can actually go down so if i overlay uh, both the signals uh, let us say for both of these things you see that uh, there is a huge reduction in in the uh, at the required frequency of 57 megahertz somewhere close to 57 megahertz you basically see that the amount of the ce signal that is basically coming in has been drastically been reduced and with this kind of insight you can design your board in such a way that uh, so that across the entire range of frequencies you basically will be able to meet your standards and then pass your simulation uh, and then pass your board tests there is a you know that uh, you've gone into a lot more detail in the other one but then i just wanted to emphasize on uh, one more model before we actually get into the uh, rest of the talk uh, variable frequency drives uh, using a fed based h bridge are as most of you know are driven by a pwm signals and they are highly efficient however as you know that they these these uh, let me see sorry however as you know you basically will have six transistors here because you are basically running a three phase motor here so you have high u high v high w low u low v and low w right here so you basically have six uh, transistors or fets in this case uh, which will be switching fast so we have used cst design studio to define a circuit of, of a three phase h bridge inverter here we do analyze here a typical mode of operation in which uh, we are basically using a pwm signal okay now uh, we also have in the recent in the latest version of cst 2023 we basically have an inbuilt macro that will help you in generating your pwm signals so all of these can be quickly configured so if at all if i am uh, running in an emc simulation uh, this is what my major circuit would look like i would have a power supply that is basically uh, my 12 volt power supply or like the one that we looked at in the dc converter here uh, so you would have a power supply that is basically coming in and then you would have your h bridge that would include all your uh, six fets and then uh, you would be basically looking at the motor output and then you would have your listen uh, which would basically be looking at how much amount of signal is basically being coupled back if at all if you're running a uh, fast testing so so if i'm looking at the actual test right here as you can see here are here is your listen and then you basically have three transistors here standing for the h uh, high values of u v and w and then you have three transistors here standing for the low u v and w here uh, on the top as you have we see with three high fats and on the bot we basically see low low fats so you can manually create these signals that are basically going to be going in depending upon uh, the way that uh, the fats would need to be set up or else you can use our inbuilt macro as well that will tell you as to that will configure the signals right for you as well depending upon your uh, pwm frequency and on your sign frequency uh, so i'm not going to go into a lot of detail uh, because keeping an interest the amount of time but if at all if you're interested please reach out to us we'll help you in understanding that as to how this model has been set up but what i want to emphasize is this if at a specific point of time as most of you are aware so you would basically have only one phase of the current that will be active so if i'm looking at this very specific instance i know for a fact that I see that that's my high U, high V, and high W, which means that, and as you can see, this basically is at my high voltage right here. It's indicating that my FET for high V is active. And then as you come down, the signals are configured in such a way so that it only one transistor is high in the upper path and one transistor is high in the lower path. So as you can see, you basically can see that low W is also active. So the current follows this path and then it comes back. So as the designer, you can basically set up very quickly simulations like this, which will help you in understanding. And you, you can define current probes to basically see as to where the currents are, are propagating in your entire structure. 
uh, since we wanted to check uh, the, the has how close the simulation results are basically coming into the final measure results as well we this setup has been created here with our counterparts in japan as well as you can see here the test setup that has been created is used to measure the conducted emission so you basically will have your uh, main board here that will consist of all the fets and then those are the uv and uvs and w's and then they are basically are going into the motor right here and then that is your listen as you know that listen basically is a three port network so it takes the power supply from the battery that's coming in and and then the signal is basically going in as well and then you are also taking a signal out into your spectrum analyzer as well so the power comes from a battery and then goes through the lisn or the line impedance stabilization network and then the pcb is connected by the cable to the motor so you can take that model and then as i said right so what i showed before was the schematic and here is the complete 3d model of the, of the prototype in this model the red cone symbols as we described above uh, are the ports which are typically excited with the signals and this is what you basically connect in the entire structure and these ports serve as a link between the 3d model uh, and the schematic model as well for each port we end up with a corresponding pin on the 3d model block of the schematic and hence we place the ports at all positions there are positions for the filtering capacitors the fets and so on in this model we also have explicitly modeled the listen as well and its enclosure in the 3d as well as well as the connecting wires so in this example uh, the top covers have just been removed so that you can basically see as to how the entire structure kind of looks but then you know they can be placed in and then you can run a complete simulation so now uh, now here's here's the moment of truth how does the simulated results compare close to the measured results and if you basically see cst's uh, electro eda uh, library eda uh, mod, uh, tool which basically takes in your pcb right it will ensure it will give you different options to read back the files with as much complexity that you basically want for example you might say you know what i don't want all the layers to be gotten and i just want only a few nets to be considered so if at all if you are a designer who's basically looking to run a quick simulation you can basically do that or if you want to have a complete uh, pcb board that is has been taken in you can basically do that as well so if at all as you basically see here you have uh, the measured results in uh, red and then the simulation results in uh, green as you can see we can see that uh, that that we basically obtain very good agreement between these two there is some very small offset here but then keep in mind that the entire full model of the motor has not been uh, simulated here because we just used only one specific uh, resistance and inductance for the motor uh if we uh, if we basically model the motor much more uh, clearly and then if we ensure that all the details of the pcbs are basically taken in as well then we basically have much better agreement that you basically have uh, for the entire structure so in a nutshell uh, this will help you in ensuring that you would be able to uh, obtain a good simulation results and then see that uh, your 3d modeling along with the schematic uh, window will will help you in ensuring that the uh, models are created as accurately as possible for all your circuit elements and they'll deliver you pretty very good results which will be very close to what you get from your comparisons okay with that uh, i think uh, with that entire theoretical knowledge it has been passed on so let's uh, have uh, poll query number 2 uh, up on the screen so you'll basically see it uh so i'll just take another 15 15 to 20 seconds to look at it it's going okay okay uh i'll just give them another five five more seconds and then we'll basically uh see that it could we have the results on the screen please conducted okay so 80% close to 79% for conducted emissions and bci good good there's no people doing bci esds as well in other areas okay that's wonderful to see so uh, uh, that's very nice to look at the results so the 
So I've just given you an overview as to what all is possible uh, in CST, just from a CE and an RE perspective, where you can basically run coupled simulations and so on. So the next part of the talk, uh, we'll uh, have a quick uh, look at uh, the wire harnessing part, which comes under uh, EMI MC as well. Uh, so wire harnesses, of course, they come, they fall under cables. So you can basically create cables within CST Studio Suite, uh, as most of you know that uh, designing cables is itself uh, is a is a long long task so you can have different kinds of cables you can have single ended differential differential cables and then you basically can have twisted pairs and then you can have different layers of steel shielding and then you can look at different strands of cabling and so on and so forth so cst uh, can help you in designing cables as well cst can help you in designing cables as well uh, and so here is a typical workflow that you basically would have. So, and I'll go through each and every step in detail as well. So we can originally look at your cross section design uh, of your cables that, that one you can, that you can basically create. And once the cables are created, you can perform a 1D simulation as well. Uh, and 1D simulation just tells you as to what's your entire S parameter results are, whether you are, whether the cables are properly matched or whether uh, the signal that you send from one end is, is reaching at the other end. Are we looking at any signal integrity issues? Is the waveform any distorted even it reaches to the other end? Can we basically look at eye diagrams and so on and so forth? And then the, you basically have your 3D EM simulation part where you can run the complete 3D model. Uh, you can basically uh, put in mesh, you can put in a, perfect mesh and then you can discretize it and then you can look at as to what the Maxwell's equations are. And then uh, once that's done, how uh, you can basically import this cable. Let us say that you created a cable and then you're trying to see if whether there's going to be any leaking from the cable, you can check that as well. And then we can look at uh, shielding optimization to see whether the shielding that you have properly put in uh, for your cable is working or if something else needs to be changed. And the final part will be the bio EM part, which will actually, uh, so this will be a nice segue into the last part of my talk. So if at all, if I'm looking at uh, a cable that has been created, let us say uh, somebody has created a cable in uh, Kitia or which is also a Dassault systems tool, or you basically have created a dot uh, XML file uh, or a dot KBL file that has been created, you can import that uh, model into CST as well. And then initially you can perform a 1D simulation. In the 1D simulation, uh, you can basically look to see uh, crosstalk, uh, which is basically your, for those who are uh, dealing with cables, they'll be aware of this. You can look at next and fixed. Next stands for near end crosstalk and fixed stands for far end crosstalk. So you basically have, let us say a differential pair and you excite one end of the cable. You want to see as to what is going on at the other end, which is near to the exciting port and which is, a, or to the coupling that is going on to the other end uh, at the receiving side. And then you can basically looking at uh, signal and power integrity, and then you can look at uh, shielding effectiveness as well. And you can look at scattering parameters, which will basically be uh, give you a complete overview as to what is happening with your uh, entire cabling part. And then you can look at uh, characteristic impedance calculations, and then you can perform your TDR analysis as well, time domain reflectometry that will help you in understanding whether the impedance is basically changing across the cable. And then you can also perform CE, conduct emissions and conduct susceptibility test as a part of the 1D simulation part. Now uh, you can then come to the 3D simulation part. We can run a co-simulation with uh, the 3D model of your cable because the 3D model will have its associated schematic as well. So in this part, we can basically look at radiated emissions and then you can look at radiated susceptibility as well. So the cable studio uh, has, uh, in addition to performing the normal simulations, it will also give you an opportunity to perform radiation and irradiation studies. What do I mean by irradiation studies? Let us say that some kind of an antenna is present at a distance and it is emitting a plane, it is emitting a signal. By the time it comes to your cable, it basically will be a plane wave structure. So as it comes close to your plane, wave, as it comes close uh, to the uh, cable and basically hits it, you can basically then see as to whether that uh, plane wave that has hit your cable is creating any kind of an uh, issue in all of your circuits. So you can look at those kind of such studies. 
and then you can if you put in a field monitors you can look at as to what is the amount of surface currents that are basically being induced in your entire structure as well and this uh, cabling study that you can basically create can then be done with uh, uh, by placing it on a structure for example what do i mean by this let us say that you have defined a cable and then you know for a fact that this cable is going to go inside an aircraft and assume for a second that a very fast uh, high free up, you know high intensity lightning strike has happened so the lightning strike comes and hits your cable and then you want to uh, hit hits your aircraft and of course you want to see whether the aircraft is designed in a proper way so that all the amount of so that there is minimal coupling that is basically going into your cabling which basically is your power circuit lines inside the cabin of your aircraft you can simulate things like that as well in cst in addition you can actually put uh, cable cables on uh, on your vehicles you can also simulate cables that are basically going under the Uh, under the feet of a passenger which i'll basically get to in the next instant in the next set of slides we can do multi you can do enhanced simulations like that as well so you can perform component level simulation i can perform circuit level simulations as well and then you can look at uh, intercoupled uh, units as well and finally uh, once you have an entire design that has been created you let us say that uh, you want to put in a human passenger there you want to see if at all if uh, any kind of uh, leakage that has come from your cables is basically entering into the passenger and is it going to cause any kind of a uh, hazard to him so you can perform all these kind of simulations with your human exposure parts and uh, especially we can look at specific absorption rate or the sar which looks at uh, which i'll get to in a, in a little bit and then you can look at radiation hazards so in a nutshell uh, the overall workflow would be something like this you would be you would create the cable cross section design of your cables and once the cable has already been created and all the shielding is properly in place according to your design you can run an uh, electromagnetic simulation for it and on top of it uh, once you are happy with the performance of the cable then you can import a cad model of let us say that's the as you can see that's the seat and then that's the bottom part of the that's the bottom uh, frame on which you'll have your seat and then you basically will have a cable that is running below it you can run a complete 3d analysis here and try to see you can put in a field monitors and then you can basically see if at all if any kind of an electromagnetic uh, leakage is basically happening here and you can also put in a field probes here to basically see as to whether your cable is behaving as an antenna and in case if it is basically behaving as an antenna what kind of uh, shielding would you want to have on it and on top of it you can basically perform uh, bio em simulations as well where you can have your passenger that is basically sitting on a car uh, here and you can perform a complete set of uh, simulations uh, like this so now this brings me uh, the bio em part brings me to the last uh, set of the talk which basically is the safety regulations part we all know that uh, we use cell phones regularly and exposure of the human body to electromagnetic fields is a common phenomena that we basically have every day most of the most of the electromagnetic fields that we basically have are very low intensity but let us say that you are working with extremely high currents uh, let me give you one example let us say that you sleep in the night with your cell phone very close to your head the next day if you basically wake up sometimes you know, it happens to me to me many many times but you actually wake up with a little uh, headache that is basically there because the antennas that are present there will be radiating energy all the time even though uh you know nobody might be calling you but you're still your wifi antennas and your bluetooth antennas are still active and uh, they are basically uh scanning for signals all there will be all power circuits so you would actually have em fields that are coming in and then penetrating into your human head so uh exposure as i said uh exposure human of human body to electromagnetic fields for prolonged uh, for prolonged durations of time uh, will actually uh become evident some of them are not so hazardous but some of them are hazardous all well, of you basically know that uh, let us say you are exposed to x rays for a quite long period of time then they'll start having good, uh, detrimental effects on your system now this uh, 
exposure to the EM fields is somewhat different for the high and the low frequency fields. High frequency fields are strongest near the body. Low frequency fields uh, can penetrate your entire body. And sometimes you basically would need to have, uh, sometimes you also give rise to your rise in temperature as well. This comes under the secondary effects part. So in order to basically take care of situations like this, we do have lots of lots of uh, human models in CST that uh, you can basically download and then you can uh, place as a part of the simulation like we did uh, before. So you can have your homogeneous models and then we do have the voxel family models and the heterogeneous CAD models. And then for all of these models, you can basically give uh, different kinds of parameters, uh, material properties for for the blood, for the tissues, and uh, for other things as well. The reason is you basically want to run simulations like this is it's very difficult to measure as to how much amount of electromagnetic field is penetrating into a human body. So for this, what people generally use is they basically use uh, phantoms to ensure they can calculate the fields that are going in. But uh, in general, they are pretty difficult to measure. And simulation, I think, is uh, is one of the ways where we basically look at uh, signals here. So here is one illustration uh, where you basically have a have one of our models here who, uh, who is basically sitting on the front seat of a car. Okay, and uh, this is a very simple model, uh, nothing, uh, all the details have not yet been placed in, but I just wanted to tell you as to how far simulations have come so that you can have an understanding as to what all can be simulated. So you have a car chassis model that's basically simulated as an impedance sheet. And uh, inside uh, below the uh, below the model, you basically have a, a wire that is basically carrying a traction current of uh, 480 amperes, which is happening at two kilohertz signal. So you simulate a model like this. So you basically have your car and then you have your voxel family model that has been placed in. And then you create a you create a loop that is basically carrying traction current of 480 amperes. As you can see, uh, the car chassis, uh, because of the electric field that, that is uh, because of the extremely high currents that have been created, you basically will have magnetic fields that are basically coming up. And these magnetic fields will be interacting with uh, the human body as well. So you can basically see the penetration of the electromagnetic fields into the human body. Now, especially uh, uh, for SAR calculation, uh, SAR stands for specific absorption rate. It basically is the amount of electric field uh, intensity that the human body can basically tolerate before it starts showing detrimental effects. So you can create a simulation like this and then you can identify uh, as to what are the points uh, at which you have, you have fields of higher intensity. As you can see, you do because at the point exactly as to where the traction current, as to where the loop is uh, expected in an expected fashion, you would have higher amount of field intensity that is present. And then you also see that uh, exactly at the point where the passenger is basically having his feet, there is also high intensity. So if at all, if you are a cable engineer that is designing simulations for the automotive vehicles, then you would understand that uh, these are the areas that you need to keep in mind. So you need to see whether this is acceptable or it is not acceptable. And then you need to rewire your circuits in such a way so that uh, minimum uh, MO, so that the minimum uh, SAR levels are basically met and uh, your uh, passenger is not affected in any way by the EM simulations part. So the key uh, summary points uh, that you basically have for uh, this kind of a simulation is if at all, if you're looking at a bio EM simulation, this uh, you basically get uh, accurate results much faster with simulations. And uh, CST Studio Suite offers a complete analysis of electromagnetics inside the vehicles. So as we discussed, we can have the entire models that are basically posable. And then you can have a CAD model for the car. And then you can basically also have a cabling as well. And you can connect different components uh, in the schematic window, and then you can run a complete uh, simulation, uh, which basically uses the 3D as well as the 2D. Uh, the second point is the safety issue of measurement. As we cannot uh, measure inside the human body, I mean, you can use phantoms, but then they too, they also, you know, they are not easy experiments to basically set up. If at all, if any of you, if any one of you has worked in the 
MRI industry where you basically design uh, high intensity magnetic fields for the MRI coils, then uh, you would need to be very mindful as to how much amount of um, electromagnetic energy can penetrate. So the only way which they basically use is they use uh, simulations, of course, and then they create phantom models because they cannot put a live human in there. As we cannot measure inside the body, simulation is the only way to ensure safety and then you fulfill the legal requirements. And uh, in addition, uh, CST Studio Suite has been there for a long time in the market and then all our, all our solvers are very mature. And then we we can help you get started easily uh, in performing complex simulations that will be useful for you in your domain. Okay. Uh, now, uh, with that, let's just go into the third poll. So I would request the... Okay, it's already there. Okay, we'll give them another five more minutes. No, five, sorry, sorry, five more seconds. Sorry, not minutes. Okay, can we have the results on the screen, please? Okay, what are the advantages? Of, uh, okay, most of you have uh, answers D. Okay, answer D has actually the highest number of uh, things, which is good. Effect of each small detail. Uh, I would actually say for this poll, at least all the all the above would be correct because uh, simulation uh, lets you run multiple test cases as well because you can look at a what if scenario kind of a thing, and uh, it provides insight into results that are not possible because yes, you can look at uh, surface currents and uh, uh, fields uh, that are basically not available to normal per, to the from an actual test and effect of each and small detail. Yeah, you can basically do that with shielding enclosures kind of a thing. And then you would want to ensure that all details are properly done so that you can see as to what's the effect of it on. Good. Okay. So uh, in summary, uh, uh, if at all, if I have to uh, summarize as to what all we basically learned in this masterclass today. So we looked at uh, as to how CST can provide you comprehensive design solutions, not just for uh, EMI EMC, uh, but for the entire range of frequencies as well, uh, as we looked at the very first part. And uh, all the solvers that I basically spoken about, right? They don't come in silos. They come, uh, you know, all the solver, all our customers have complete technology. And CST provides you tools with extremely unique functionality. You can look at cable studios as well uh, as some of the things that we basically looked at. And one of the main advantages, uh, one of the main advantages that I basically would have to say, is uh, the GUI is very friendly. So CST is basically set up in such a way so that. Uh, it's almost similar to how you write. So just like you write all the way from left to right, left to right, right? So you basically model your design or else you import it off, you simulate it. And once the simulation is done, you can run a co-simulation uh, with a combined results in the schematic window. And if at all, if you think that uh, you need to perform post-processing, you can basically do those post-processing stand uh, post-processing as well. And uh, you can look at the final results. And of course, the multiple solvers plus the co-simulation that you can basically perform is a major strength that we generally have. So with that, I thank all of you for uh, attending this talk. I see that there are a couple of questions. I will get to them in a second. Thank you very much for all of you who have joined. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seva, for that uh, very insightful and detailed presentation. And uh, like you rightly said, you know, not just a couple of questions, but I think we have a flurry of questions our way so i'll just quickly you know without wasting any time i'll just start taking them one by okay. one and uh, starting with this question which is about what are the automotive components which are required to meet with emi emc testing criteria and faces emi challenges in general uh, that's a very interesting question that has been brought up so in general let us say that uh, if at all if you're designing an emi designing a simulation for the EMI EMC thing, right? What you would generally do is we always tell you to make it a part to start it from the design phase as well. So assuming that you're starting from the PCB level, you would have need to have a good PCB model that has been created. So something like ODB++ or something that you basically have uh, created. And then you want to see that uh, that model has properly been is loaded in. And then when you are looking at components, let us say that if they are lump components, you just want to ensure that you have the 
proper amount of information on whether these lumped components that are being read in, whether they have any parasitic effects. So CST's schematic window lets you deal with, uh, you can simulate an ideal model as well, or you can basically look at, uh, it will also let you design, you know, read in uh, parametric values, uh, sorry, not parametric, excuse me, parasitic values as well. So you can have parasitic inductance and parasitic resistance for an actual capacitor. So you can, so the, the more amount of information which you can give it to the tool, the tool will help you in, in ensuring that you get much better results. And finally, uh, let us say that if you have nonlinear devices, for example, like diodes or whether you have an, uh, transistors or something, right? It would be much better if you can basically get from the vendor as to what kind of, you know, whether you can basically get the spice files. Or let us say that at some points you have a nonlinear uh, system uh, that has already been created and uh, the vendor is not willing to share your, share much more details. You can basically say that, you know, you can take a touchstone file for import and then you can basically run the simulation like that. Next one. Yeah. So I'll move to the next question. And uh, this is from Mr. Hardik Nayak. Okay. What is the frequency range and shielding effectiveness for electronics components? I, uh, I think uh, that depends on what kind of a simulation that you are basically looking at looking at in general uh, the shielding uh, effectiveness studies that we basically do for example if you're looking at a shielding enclosure right like you put a pcb in a box or something they are generally done at uh, pretty low frequencies they are not done at extremely high frequencies like you would basically look at antennas or so but then keep in mind that whenever you're performing a shielding effectiveness study you would actually want to have a cad model and the more amount of information that you basically have with the CAD model, because what happens is all this crews and everything that you would have in your system would also have an influence on the resonance of the box as well. So to completely characterize the structure, you would need to have as much as much detail as possible. And our uh, main solvers are capable of handling complex CADs as well. So that should not be an issue at all. Yeah. And uh, before we move further, uh, Dr. Seva, you know, I would request uh, our team to launch the feedback form related to this webinar so that we can gauge the audience's perspective about how they felt about this webinar and, you know, in future, what sort of engagement they would want us to give them. So, yeah, I think the form is live on our screens right now. And I would request the attendees, if you can please take a few seconds to just go through and fill that form. Thank you. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Dr. Siva, so, you know, next question is from uh, Mr. Balaji Selvaraj. As an automotive OEM, can we include the EMC simulation boundaries done by tier one suppliers to simulate the vehicle level EMI EMC simulations? See, in general, as I was uh, talking about, right, uh, whether you are, whether uh, you are basically when you're creating a complete vehicle uh, level EMI EMC simulation, it's, you know, in general, uh, I would actually frame, uh, look at look at the problem the other way, because if at all, if you're building something, right, you would also, you would always need to start from the lower points, from the small details, so that your system is basically meeting the requirements at each and every little point, rather than you, and then you slowly start building up. For example, let us say that you created a complete system, and then you actually try to run it, it's going to take huge time and huge effort. And let us say that if it fails, then you basically do not exactly know as to, all you know is the system has failed. But then you do not know exactly as to what might have triggered the failure thing. So you would actually want to start the system uh, from um, the lower levels as well and then slowly start building up. Sure. So the next question is from Mr. Varun Jaiswal. When should we rely on ferrite beads in order to address conducted noise? And when we must avoid it and rely solely on optimized layout? Uh, I think uh, if you could uh, if you could send me an email on it, I think we do have an entire application note that will uh, describe describe on when the ferrite beads would need to be added in and when uh, they can be avoided as well. So it will take a lot more detail. Yeah. So so I would request him to email us. So we will share Dr. Seva's email ID in the chat box so that every one of you can view his ID and you know if you want to connect with him offline, you can do so. Uh, another question which is on EMC and EMI as shown in automotive seating domain. So I think this is with regard to your seating slide in the presentation. 
correct. EMC and EMI as shown in automotive seating domain system calculates at the same level of ISO 26262. Uh, what are the required components and circuit simulations? So I am assuming that ISO 26262 is an automotive, is, is basically a standard for functional safety. So what we basically have is we actually have in, uh, because the CST Studio Suite is, as I said, it's, it's the, one of the world's it's, it's the leading uh, uh, expo, uh, you know, simulation softwares. And we do have a set of limit lines for different, different standards that are already built in. So you basically can use the standard levels to see whether your uh, system that you have basically created is uh, basically compatible. And if at all, if it is not already there, the specific standard, I'll have to go and check whether that's there or not. But if at all, if it's not there, there's an also an option for you to actually import the standard as a text file. And then you can overlay the final result that you have obtained. And that will help you in identifying whether uh, the CE test or the RE test that, or whether the results that you have basically obtained are meeting the standards. And I think we already answered the question on required components and circuit simulations uh, in the earlier one. Okay. And uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So doctor, last question. And you know, I think this is on sort of a, on and an, on a guiding note. So this is from Miss Asha and she wants to understand that, you know, she's a fresher in this CST and EMC field. Correct. And she wants to know how should we and how should and where should she start? I think she's talking about her career prospects in this space. <laughs> okay, I, I think, uh, you, you know, Unfortunately, EMI EMC, uh, it's uh, it's not a part of the school curriculum. I think you know it's not yet. It's something that you basically, uh, uh, it basically is something that you start that you start learning uh, when you come to work. But if at all, uh, what I would suggest, uh, Miss Asha, is if at all, if she has access to CST from her university, you know, uh, there is an entire set of examples that you basically so what we have as a part of uh, CST is we have something called as component library that basically has an entire set of examples that will help one in getting started for the EMI EMC simulations and as to how you basically set up a problem and uh, that is one and uh, in addition as well uh, you basically uh, have uh, a complete user guide that we basically have in the help section of CST as well that will help help her in ensuring that you know she has a quick start in understanding as to how to set up an EMI EMC simulation. Further, uh, you know, she can if she's a uh, if she's already working, you know, she already has uh, if she's already used, uh, you know, if her company uses CST, then uh, we do have experts uh, who basically offer training as well on CST and how to set up EMI EMC simulations. But I just want to make one thing very clear here. See, EMI EMC is one of the more challenging topics that has basically come up right now, uh, especially in the domain of uh, automotives as, with the heavy push towards EVs as well. So uh, what I would tell her is, uh, you know, it doesn't come in one day. <laughs> That's it. So it's going to take a little time because you would have to, let us say that you would have to, as you can basically see, it involves setting up a simulation where you would be loading PCB files. So the entire PCB structure has to be properly designed properly. And then so if at all, if she's importing it from somebody else who has created the PCB file, it might be easier. But uh, the help uh, and the component library are a good place to start. And we offer dedicated trainings as well. And this to me. Sure. I think hard work and a focused approach are definitely going to help. And uh, yeah. uh, Masasha, all the best to you for that. And uh, wish you all the best for your future endeavors in this domain. And with that, we've completely run out of time. And uh, Dr. Siva, thank you so much for taking us through this detailed presentation and for, you know, answering all these questions from the audience. Uh, we still, you know, have a few questions left unanswered. So what I would request you to do is if you could just type in your email address in the chat box so that all the panel, you know, everyone who is attending this webinar right now has access to your email ID and, you know, whosoever wants to connect with you offline after this, for a detailed engagement can just, you know. Okay. You want me, you want me to, yes. oh, okay. Okay. So <clears throat> I hope you are able to see it, right? Yes. Can you, can you mind? Okay. Yeah. So it is SPM7, numeral 7 at 3ds.com. 
right yeah so that's my seven at 3ds.com that's dr seva's email id so if you wish to connect with him offline please feel free and go ahead and reach out to him over email and uh, with that we would close this webinar here and dr seva thank you once again thank you to all the attendees for logging into this webinar for giving us your time hope you had a lot of takeaways from this master class mm -hmm. and uh, we wish to bring more such initiatives to you going forward and we have received the feedback form so we will be studying that and uh, accordingly we will be aligning future master classes and webinars for you so with thank that you. thank you very much for joining wish thank you all you. the best